My name is Claire Curtin. I'm with Lawrence Berkeley National Lab and I'm going to spend this next hour talking a little bit about what we have been doing in the building analytics uh, group that I'm working in. Uh, just a small bit of background on Lawrence Berkeley National Lab. Um, we're part or a DOE lab um, and uh, the uh, Berkeley lab in particular has done energy efficiency research for about 40 years in a number of different areas. Um, ours is in a small group uh, that is led by Dr. Gr Jessica Granderson. And um, we, we look at building data analytics in, in commercial buildings. Uh, there are other uh, sister groups in our division that look at uh, residential and industrial, but ours, our focus really is on, on commercial buildings. So let's move ahead. These are the course that you've seen before. So today I'm going to talk um, uh, about a few things. Um, the motivation to use EMIS, which is the acronym uh, Energy Management Information Systems, um, I'll talk a little bit too about the uh, features of those. Um, we'll, we'll have some, uh, some common language that I'll be able to share with you so we all know what we're talking about or on the same page. I'm going to talk a bit too about an a initiative that we are running through our group uh, that is called the uh, Smart Energy Analytics Campaign. That's part of the DOE Better Buildings um, work. And from that, um, the, uh, from the Smart Energy Analytics Campaign, we have a number of um, exemplary projects that I'm going to present as, as uh, kind of lightning, uh, lightning round case studies, and then uh, end up with uh, some words about our commissioning study. Um, in between these sections, um, I can pause for a bit and uh, take a, a question or a comment from the audience. And I have a microphone here, and if anybody, uh, I'll tell you when we'll, we'll be uh, doing those, um, those pauses. And if anybody wants to make a comment, question, raise your hand, and we can get a mic over to you. So with that, um, I'm going to give some framing about the motivation of why anybody is going to even look at using EMIS. Um, you probably all know that the data is coming into energy managers from everywhere, from utility bills, from uh, meters, from uh, BAS systems, and the, the energy manager is uh, somewhat can be inundated with this, this uh, data. So having data is great, but unless you get insights or you can find the corrective actions in that data, it really doesn't do you any good. So what we're looking for are tools to help us analyze and prioritize the kind of data that's coming in from, from all of these sources. Now we've had analytic software for about 20 years or so, and, um, but we're really seeing recently a, a real uptake in it. And so with that, uh, DOE has, has had a, more of a focus and has asked us at, at the lab to, to study how it's being used and um, where we're seeing um, uh, problems, successes, and, and just sort of get the, the lay of the land of how it's really, how these tools are being used in the real world. So what we hope is that this data onslaught is going to become something that's, that's much more reasonable. This is an example of unreasonable. <laughs> um, we work with Carleton College, which is a small liberal arts college in Minnesota. The energy manager was getting this kind of data um, on an irregular basis. She was um, kind of at her wit's end and, and wasn't able to, to really make any decisions from it. Things were uh, handwritten uh, on, on various different uh, formats. So uh, her, her name is uh, Martha Larson. So she said that it was impossible to make any real uh, decisions from the kind of data that she was getting. Um, and so she, she contracted with an a energy information systems uh, company to, to help her organize that data. When I showed this slide to uh, uh, some building managers recently, um, uh, gentleman in the front said, that's bad, but he, he would be happy even to get this. He says, I don't, I, I, I don't get it. I have these holes in my data, if, you know, if, even as bad as it is, if I could get that, I would be, I'd be happy. So, so we, can, we can do better than that, I think. So this is what um, Carleton College um, was able to put together uh, using the Lucid Building OS tool. 
and they were um, very uh, pleased with how the visualizations worked out for them. Um, this is just one example of, of many that I'll be able to show you. So before we go any further, we can talk about what EMIS is, because what we know from uh, talking to those of us at the lab and in this group, what we know is that there are a lot of acronyms in this business. <laughs> I thought, I, I used to work at PG&E, uh, Pacific Gas and Electric, and I thought we used a lot of acronyms, but this is um, something even, <laughs> even different from that. So, so how we organize it and what we uh, started to do a few years ago was to, to lay this framework, this graphical kind of framework that says what are the differences between these tools. Um, and so we, we broke it down into the two sides of um, the, the meter level data that is on uh, the left side. What we're looking here is uh, whole building metering and, uh, and some submetering, but, but generally a whole, whole building uh, meter that's feeding uh, the, the products you see on the left, so benchmarking, energy information systems, and advanced EIS. So all of them are, are, are useful, um, but what we, we, we know with them, um, so those um, build analysis tools, they are good, we, but we don't get hourly or, um, or even 15 minute data generally from those to, to make um, uh, deep kinds of uh, decisions about what, what energy uh, conservation measures to go after. For the EIS, we do now start to see a, a bit more complexity that's, that's offered to it. Um, these, can, these, these are the tools that can uh, store and analyze um, and uh, display. So the things that really set this apart um, is that the dashboards, generally now these are web portal dashboards that um, a whole uh, group of people, uh, in, and we'll, I'll show you a few uh, examples of that can can see how uh, and and can see patterns um, like what Carleton College saw with that building OS. Uh, I'm sorry, Lucid building OS. Um, beyond that, there are uh, a few uh, emerging companies are doing advanced EIS, and those have a higher level uh, of automated analysis. They often have energy models that are built into them that are looking at um, uh, uh, predictive models. On the right side, we are now talking on the system level, so BAS data. Um, so we also know that BAS is the most widely adopted of these EMIS tools. And um, they are, they're very good at, um, uh, in, in the trend logging, you can see um, uh, a lot of different uh, uh, somewhat simpler uh, uh, data visualizations. Um, in, the, in the vein of, there's a lot of acronyms, uh, BAS, as you all probably know, is also known as, uh, let's see, BMS, EMCS, EMS. So um, we, we, were, we try to uh, standardize just on the, the term of BAS. Below that is fault detection diagnostics tools. Um, these are now where we're starting to take the BAS trend data and apply it to and compare it to a set of fault rules. Those fault rules um, are generally on uh, HVAC and lighting systems. Um, there, are, there are some others, but just in, in general, FDD um, is, is uh, focused on HVAC. Um, and then ASO, the uh, automated system optimization, is uh, again the next higher level, not yet uh, quite uh, as, as um, uh, large of a, a, a offering that, that we see from software. Um, but the thing that characterizes this that it's, is that it's a two-way communication. So a fault would, might be thrown, the ASO system then sends the instruction back to the BAS on the, on the corrective action to take. Uh, in, these, in that case, there would be no human in the loop there. So um, I will say that there is uh, one word of caution about this is that uh, the way we present it, it seems that these are all very discrete uh, kinds of um, capabilities that all these products have. We do know that in the real world, though, a lot of these products that start to overlap a bit where features from uh, FDD can be uh, sometimes seen in, in, uh, in EIS. But for the most part today, I'm gonna just uh, uh, treat them as, as discrete kind of um, product types. 
So um, just some some more information on the on this um, how uh, EIS and advanced EIS work. We so we see that the uh, uh, whole building data is is taken in as the the feed on the uh, hourly or 15 minute basis. It's uh, displayed in a in a dashboard generally. And um, it is, it's quite good at, at showing uh, anomaly detections um, where, where um, uh, and I will show you an example of that in a, in a minute. And um, it, in the case of the advanced EIS, those are the ones that we can see uh, product savings verification being uh, a feature that, that is in some of them. One piece that is, that I wanted to point out and um, Sure you can see. Yeah, I guess you can see the uh, citation at the bottom. Uh, so the thing that we have done at the lab and continue to do is to uh, gather data on how all of these are being used in, and how the uh, energy really is being saved for the um, uh, buildings that we know that are using them. So uh, in, let's see, this was published 2013, um, uh, Dr. Granderson uh, looked at uh, set of, of buildings and, and looked at um, what kind of uh, energy performances we were getting from uh, all the, the various types of, uh, in, in this case, of EIS. And what they found was a, uh, a median 8% savings for portfolios, for building portfolios that were in their study group and 17% um, savings for single site. So. Um, it was early data, and we continue to look at that. Um, and um, but this is the, uh, the the numbers that we can uh, operate from right now. Some product examples um, on the left side. You see just a, a, a small group of um, the the name of the products that are out there that are under the EIS umbrella or, um, product type. Um, this is by no means a, a a full list. Um, we and as a, a, a DOE lab, we don't endorse any one or another one of these. But we have looked at and are familiar with um, uh, all of them here. We have a much longer list of um, EIS, FDD, and ASO products that are on our website, um, on the SmartEnergyAnalytics.org website, and um, that's a. a a much more comprehensive list with, with links. But so we just wanted to give a, a, a small look at, at who's, who's doing what for um, offering EIS. So um, all of them, uh, they, they do have certain features, of course, that distinguish them from each other. But uh, in general, they are um, these display uh, uh, technologies, uh, dashboards, and they can um, track savings um, in, in real time. Uh, in terms of costs, at the bottom, uh, they tend to be the, the uh, more simple EIS are some of the um, least expensive ways to, to get a, a commercial building um, uh, hooked into the, this kind of data um, using a third-party software that's either uh, software as a service, uh, sometimes they're installed on, on site. Um, and the cost can go up a bit if there's a service provider that is um, also uh, part of that picture and has contracted with the with the commercial building. Um, just a couple of screenshots if you have not seen um, at EIS before. The uh, Lucid is again uh, displayed on the left showing some hourly interval data. On the right hand side the uh, Cascade Energy which would be considered a, an advanced EIS um, and in that one it's showing the cumulative savings over time. Um, one more just quick example of real world. Um, this is uh, a, an example of the Lawrence Berkeley National Lab has done uh, pretty extensive um, uh, energy management information systems rollout and continues to. And um, the, the energy manager was faced with data coming from uh, a number of different sources, just a few of them shown on the far left-hand side, that were all going to separate server types, no nothing that was connected, and then he was having to uh, spreadsheet everything uh, on a monthly basis. It was uh, quite labor-intensive for him, and uh, it didn't give him visualizations that um, those, those graphical visualizations can really point out some, some real uh, opportunities. After he implemented um, uh, his 
EIS, he was able to very uh, neatly and clearly see um, buildings. Um, he can drill down on, on uh, the energy performance of these buildings, so it was um, much more actionable for him. So EIS, um, and one of the fairly common features of EIS is that it shows um, and displays heat maps. And this one is uh, just showing how a heat map was used um, in this uh, particular uh, office building, where in April, the, um, uh, and you see on the, the red side, uh, against a baseline, the temperature was quite uh, high in the unoccupied hours, um, you know, shown in the red there, and the number one also is uh, uh, displaying it. Uh, energy manager was able to uh, uh, figure that something was wrong, had uh, some fixes put in place, and uh, went to the correct nighttime setback that had been overridden some number of months before. And uh, so we got back to the, the number two position where everything was uh, operating um, the way they had expected to and they were not wasting anything. Uh, another tool uh, or another feature that a lot of EIS uh, offer is um, a load profile. This one is a, a monthly reading uh, showing uh, the, the gray lines are every day's energy use and uh, the, the, the graphical organization of it um, also shows at the very top line, which is red, uh, the, the highest usage day in that month and uh, the green line at the bottom was the lowest possible use. So um, the thing that this was, was able to show to the, the energy manager was that the, um, the base load, that, that lowest day does look pretty good, and if um, there's a, a number of days that are clustering around there, but the uh, spread of the energy performance that was seen in that month was, was not something that they wanted to see. So they, they used this to figure out what was driving those, that high day, or highest day's uh, usage, and um, uh, jumped on that. On the, if you remember on the, uh, right-hand side of that framework, we have fault detection diagnostics. So this one is, um, uh, like I say, typically with uh, HVAC, uh, sometimes lighting systems. And it is a rule-based system to uh, compare the BAS data to a set of rules um, that are um, uh, uh, acceptable or usually not acceptable, where then the, the fault is brought forward and prioritized. Um, in the uh, look at the savings potential for FDD tools, um, we uh, were we have used the um, reference at, at the bottom for um, a savings potential of two to eleven percent, um, and uh, that too is is one that we are continually looking at. Um, but so uh, an example of of uh, FDD rules, if you're not familiar with FDD, it could be. Um, a, 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 and a, they, some call them alarms. The alarm is thrown if uh, a KW in a particular uh, building exceeds a target. Um, it can see if there are fans cycling on and off too often. And um, you can, uh, uh, another rule, a typical rule, um, is that uh, HVAC and lighting is not shut off during unoccupied times. Um, again, uh, similar to the EIS slide, here's a, a, just a few examples in the blue box on the left and um, uh, the, the kinds of um, benefits and, and costs that have been mentioned before, or, I'm sorry, the benefits and uh, potential that's been mentioned before. The cost on this side is, is um, somewhat more expensive than an EIS. Uh, generally, the reason is that the setup and the configuration of this can be uh, more labor intensive. Um, and uh, depending on how many customizations are done to the system, uh, the, the rule base of the, the system faults can be, um, uh, it, it can, you can add to the cost, um, uh, depending on how, how uh, 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 complex you, you um, ask your, your rule maker to be. Sometimes a third party is writing those rules. Uh, sometimes, and uh, we have a, an example that I'll show you a little bit later of uh, a school that was writing their own, their own rules. And a screenshot of FDD, this is an output from uh, the Schneider Electric uh, FDD tool. And um, the, 
the way that uh, the display works uh, is that the top issues, um, and because of the rule base, it knows which are the most important rules to display, and um, uh, that identifies by building what's going wrong. And then in the second part uh, shows what the possible recommended actions can be to uh, fix what, what those, um, those faults have been. And uh, another example is the um, product that, that is uh, uh, SkySpark by SkyFoundry. And uh, they just organize their data in a little bit different uh, way. The building's on the left, um, and it's, it's showing which are the um, most important faults to pay attention to um, in, that, in the red uh, uh, by, 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 by color. Um, the other thing that these, this can do is uh, with SkySpark, it uh, has uh, in its fault the in the in the next deep dive down from uh, the fault that's identified. It can uh, say what the fault really is and what the recommended actions for um, for reversing that fault would be. So. Uh, many of the FDD tools uh, have the feature of um, identifying simultaneous heating and cooling, this one from uh, KGS buildings, the clockwork products, clockworks. And uh, in this one, uh, this uh, particular fault was that the um, uh, a valve, let's see, uh, yeah, there was a, a valve was stuck open for a certain amount of time that was allowing the uh, simultaneous heating and cooling. And uh, the, in, in this product, it, it sends an actual email notification to the building manager, and um, they uh, submit a, a work order, things get fixed, and, and it, uh, it was uh, taken care of. So the, uh, the, the um, Nick Gajewski of, of KGS um, has said that the, um, you know, this, this could have gone on for some who knows how long a time if, if the uh, email notification had not gone to that facilities engineer. So how these all tie together in a commissioning way um, is uh, something that uh, we are uh, very much interested in, in having the uh, participants uh, that we uh, are engaged with in the smart energy analytics campaign that they use them within a process. So all this data is good. If it's not acted upon or if it's not understood who it is that is um, uh, responsible for it, uh, it just becomes data that has been paid for and not acted upon. So um, we really are supporting the uh, MBCX idea of monitoring base commissioning. So it's a real continuous commissioning idea where the data from these uh, EIS FDD products are used on a continual basis by the facility managers, energy managers, um, to, to keep the building in tune. So rather than uh, waiting several years to do uh, an RCX uh, on a three to five year basis and, and having um, uh, a much larger lift to get the building back into tune, that this is a, a, a continual process. Um, we uh, have put together, a, 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 since MBCX is uh, somewhat of a uh, new idea, um, particularly as it's related to these, um, these EMIS tools, uh, we wrote a, a plan template that's available to anybody who is interested that, that really does um, just lay out what the process is. So this is, so the MBCX plan, MBCX is a, is a process. It's not a, uh, it's not a uh, feature that you uh, uh, get from somebody else. It's, a, it's a, a real structured process for how you use the data that's coming from these, these various tools. So with that, I'm gonna take a quick pause, see if there are any questions or comments, and I'll give the microphone to my assistant here who's going to run it back and we have probably about uh, uh, a minute uh, or two to um, to do this so we can get through everything else so uh, we had some raised hands right here so my question is, is just how do you get the information from the BAS and the other systems into this software that monitors it all what what you know, how are you doing this? Because I'm assuming the software database is 
remote from these buildings? You know, what protocols or languages are used, et right. cetera? Um, thank you. Uh, so through the various um, uh, it, um, protocols, BACnet and um, the, the the, some of the tools uh, are hosted in the cloud, but some can be server-based as well on site. So, um, and I think, I guess in the um, uh, uh, LBL ex uh, example, um, they, they were having to go through a, a number of different communications protocols. Yes? Has there been any case study that compares the features of different analytics product uh, uh, with each other? From different vendors. So uh, if, I don't know if everybody heard the, the question is, have there been any case study that um, compares all the features of the various products um, in the FDD uh, realm itself? Um, uh, yes and no. Um, <laughs> uh, so the, the tools are, are coming out all the time. This is a very active market right now. Um, and, and like I say, uh, we at the lab can't um, endorse any one or another, but what we did do a few months ago was we did release a, uh, an AFDD study that looked at features of 11 different um, F F FDD product. It is, um, let's see, yes, that's also on the Smart Energy Analytics website, and um, if, if we have some time at the end, I can bring up that web page and, and show you where those would be. But uh, I believe it's called the AFDD characterization uh, uh, study. <laughs> Thanks for the question. Uh, the uh, 2 to 11% for FDD, yes. is that additional savings above the 8 to 17% that you had mentioned it's, earlier? Um, it's actually different from the 8. The 8 to 17 was specifically for EIS um, uh, installations, and the 2 to 11 was the findings for FDD only. We have time for one more. Great. Is there any, any kind of standard specification to, let's say you have a customer that would decide that they want to do this, uh, to solicit pricing and um, yes, the, you, you guys are like plants for, for the work that we've done at LVNL. So yeah, there is. Um, uh, in particular, we in, in, in our group have written an RFP uh, template that is specifically looking at EMIS products. Um, and in fact, we're doing uh, another uh, uh, version of it too. Um, so so the, uh, the building owner who is uh, looking into what features are useful to them uh, in their particular building type, uh, office, K-12, hospital, whatever it is, that they can um, ask for the, the, the right kind of and, and most useful kind of feature in the FDD and EIS product. Yes, yes. Everything we do is public, um, because since we're a, a DOE lab, um, this is all uh, publicly available. So, um, and uh, the, the real clearinghouse right now, um, and the easiest place to get uh, all these resources that have uh, been talked about is at the smart-energy-analytics.org website. <laughs> so um, I will try to, to show you at the end, because there is a, a fair number of um, uh, very broad resources um, that are in a couple different categories um, in technology process and business case that we have written over the years that can help out. Great. Yeah, thanks for the questions. Thank you very much for the microphone work. <laughs> so um, the Smart Energy Analytics Campaign is um, an initiative that uh, came under the Better Buildings uh, work that DOE offers, and um, we have been the Energy Management Information System center of that for um, uh, several years. And um, what we did starting in 2016 was really put a, a big push into um, understanding a lot more from those uh, adopters of commercial, uh, in the commercial building sector who were uh, using 
these tools and or we're just about to adopt them. So uh, similar to maybe what you're saying is that they were at the cusp of jumping into um, uh, buying an FDD system, uh, a, a contract of, of S FDD. And um, so we have brought together a, a group of, of people. So this, this whole um, uh, campaign, and this is the front page of the website, is designed to um, understand what the, that adoption is and how, how folks are, are using it um, out in the, in the real world. Uh, because right now there isn't a great understanding. Um, we have uh, vendor information, which is very useful and very uh, helpful, but we um, are coming at this as a, um, a, a real uh, an interested third party, or you know, we, we are um, not pushing one idea or another. We are really seeing where things are, are going, what the trends are. Um, so like I say, we, we are um, uh, looking at, at what the adoption is, and, and also who's using MBCX. So we, we uh, want this package to go together uh, so that we can, we can see how, uh, and if there is any MBCX that's really working its way into the, uh, the mix. Um, our participants in the campaign, um, we, we offer them technical support in, in, a, in a couple of different areas. And what we need back from them is data. We need energy data from them. We need um, uh, what measures they are implementing after uh, using their, their EMS, uh, EMIS. And um, we ask them to really share their results. Um, we anonymize their data so that no one is, is um, uh, shown in particular what their buildings are doing, but we're, we're trying to, to get this data set that really is um, reflective of, of what's going out, uh, out there in the world. Um, and you can see that our goal is to um, produce and publish the results of these um, uh, that summarizes um, where things are. So um, in the, the last year, we, um, and now uh, let's see, so late summer of last year, we released our first report of data that we had gathered um, from, from the participants in the campaign, and we continue to gather data. We will have an update to that um, synthesis report. Uh, we'll have a year two synthesis report in the fall of this year. Um, a couple of quick uh, notes about what the benefits of the campaign are. We have uh, 66 um, participants at the moment. And um, there's an ability for them to throw their hat in the ring for national recognition of uh, various types uh, that we offer through the campaign. So um, the, uh, the, the lightning case studies that I'm gonna show you are folks who have been recognized in the campaign for some exemplary product or, or project that they've done. Um, so let's see, we are, uh, it, like I say, we're, we offer this uh, technical support that can take a couple of different um, uh, faces. So uh, with every participant that is, uh, comes into the campaign, we get to know them actually pretty well and what their energy uh, use is, but also what their problems are, what their pain points are that they're having with uh, any particular system that they're using. Um, we are able to, and, and uh, we've, we found in, in talking to a lot of them that there were a lot of common questions about FDD and FDD use for those who are, that were in the campaign or had either were starting right at the cusp of it or that were, were pretty advanced users. Um, so what we did was um, create a, a peer network that is just for campaign uh, participants. And in it we, we uh, have webinars, I think we've done seven so far, uh, six or seven so far that really delve into a particular FDD topic that they have said is is of particular interest to them. So we have, uh, we recently had one on data management. We've, I think we've had others on um, writing FDD rules. Um, so it's a, a, a very good forum for our participants to come together and talk to each other. Um, we were maybe surprised that uh, they really are um, uh, happy to, to find each other and to, to talk to another building owner that might be at the same, the same place they are. 
Um, other resources that we offer through technical support is um, we have uh, information about incentives that are available um, for in, in all the states of uh, um, the U.S. And we have this uh, find a product or service that I alluded to before that is our much more comprehensive list of uh, all the FDD, uh, ASO, and um, EIS products that are out on the market that we know about. If there are more, please let us know and we can do a review and, uh, and get them up there. So I'm gonna go into this uh, lightning round of, of uh, case studies and um, uh, hopefully we'll be able to have a, another quick uh, Q&A at the, the end of this. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, so this is the recognition that we um, are able to give. We, we do it two times a year in the spring and the fall. And these are last year's winners. Um, we just completed the 2018 winners last week. Um, so we'll be announcing those. But last year, uh, you can see these are the, part, uh, the participants that were were recognized. So the first one I'm going to give you a little uh, background on is uh, Aurora Public Schools, which is a, a K through 12 district in Aurora, Colorado. They are um, uh, they have a very active and energetic uh, energy manager in their school district. Um, it's a 40,000 student school district, so it's quite large. They have uh, 50 buildings that are um, under an, an EIS system. Um, the thing that they did and uh, that was really important to them was to make this information very public within their school community. So the black um, uh, output that you see there is their uh, dashboard that is used by a number of different groups in the, in the school. Um, they, it, they, they, in fact, they put it on a 70-inch monitor in the district headquarters. Um, it's called the Interactive Diagnostic Console. And um, it's, uh, it's very prominent, <laughs> so uh, it's, it's kind of raising the awareness of the, the energy use in the, um, across the whole district. They uh, also um, have the maintenance staff uh, use the data from that, um, from that EIS to uh, really uh, see what, what's going on in it, and it can um, uh, inform their HVAC technicians on, on where the critical building performance problems are in, in, in which school. Um, they also have a, a very uh, uh, genuine interest in having students take this all to heart. So uh, the, this is a, it's a, a web portal as well, so they have um, students engaged in competitions and uh, badge uh, competitions where one school will um, uh, save more energy than another and, and win awards. And uh, sort of similarly, they're, they're also bringing custodians, <coughs> excuse me, into the, into the awareness of this because custodians are probably more than anybody else, the, the boots on the ground who can make energy um, savings um, on, a, on a very daily basis. So uh, they have had custodians come into this and they have a, a program of incentivizing um, them as well. So we, we thought that that, um, among other things, we thought that their um, real public awareness and the, uh, the, the lifting of everybody's um, uh, engagement with, with energy was, was worth uh, a, an award and they got the uh, new installation uh, award in the, uh, let's see, in the fall of last year. Um, their energy manager, we, we haven't verified this yet ourselves, but their energy manager has said that they've avoided over a um, million dollars in utility costs over the last three years due to retrofitting, improved scheduling, um, and monitoring of off-hours energy use. So um, we'll, uh, we'll keep working with them and tracking that. The next one is MGM International, uh, Resorts International, um, a neighbor right down the road. Uh, last year, they were uh, the participant that was recognized for having the largest portfolio that was using analytics, and um, they they did it in a in a kind of interesting way. Um, before they had an, an FDD system, they were seeing a lot of challenges. They were seeing that their um, after they would do a retro commissioning of a building, um, that their operational improvements really were degrading, and they they were concerned that it was degrading too too quickly, and that the uh, the RCX process was was doing um, uh, a good job, but it was very hard to scale that across a, a larger portfolio. So they wanted to get 
um, uh, ready for a, a bigger rollout. So they installed um, uh, fault detection and diagnostics, and they even targeted that effort by going and only um, um, working with the central plant information. And they were um, finding, let's see, uh, some of the, the faults that were, were found were um, system controls were overridden quite frequently, um, and their chiller efficiency was, was really um, not where they wanted it to be. So um, they worked with a third party, um, like um, I don't remember in the slide that had the uh, blue uh, uh, section on the left um, and the, the costs. This one was uh, uh, not done all on their own. They had their energy manager worked with a with a third party, and uh, really optimized those rules. So once they got their their feet wet with the FDD and central plant, they were happy with it. They uh, rolled it out into to other buildings in their portfolio, and um, and then they turned their attention to the air handlers. So, so they took this very uh, methodical kind of approach to how they would uh, understand and respond to faults. Um, so they, they were, um, uh, and, and in, in a large portfolio of square footage too. Next up is Central Piedmont Community College, which is a community college in um, North Carolina. And um, they are a participant that is, um, uh, they, they have a, a large, campus, it's um, 3.4 million square feet, which is one of the biggest community colleges in the East Coast, um, at least by physical space. And, but they have a very small um, energy team. So they have to do a lot with very few folks. And um, they, they were also awarded uh, a, um, recognition for a new installation using FTD. So, um, they have done uh, uh, several uh, things that are a little bit different. They work with two service providers, and um, uh, one group of service providers is um, doing custom FDD rules for two buildings, and then another service provider is doing um, some, some customization on a third one. So they're sort of comparing how they work with these uh, two different providers, and so into the future they'll know um, who, who it is that they will be um, uh, going with in the, in, in a, in the much larger rollout. Let me check my time, okay. Uh, the next was the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Um, this is the state of Kentucky. They did a, a very, uh, very comprehensive, probably the most comprehensive work that we've seen to date. Um, they were awarded the best practice um, uh, recognition in the campaign. Uh, they, in 2009, there was a Kentucky executive order that all the state buildings had to be benchmarked. So they started, uh, the, the energy folks within the uh, state of Kentucky uh, started with that, but they also um, developed this whole platform um, and it's now, a, 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 it's an analysis platform of uh, FDD and EIS. They currently have uh, 1,100 buildings that are connected to the EIS and 118 buildings that are connected to uh, FDD. Um, so they, in, the, in developing this, they could um, really get what they wanted because they were, um, were writing it with, with a with a third party, um, but they were uh, designing this 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 platform for doing everything they wanted, um, and so they were able to um, do things like uh, let's see they. Uh, have mechanical and control drawings that are part of the platform so they can see if there's a fault thrown on a particular building they can uh, dive down, see what the, what the um, uh, mechanical drawings are and they can um, also have it be uh, uh, sent to their state work order system uh, where it's tracked and once, it's, uh, once the fix is done it comes back to the work order system and a cost is associated to it so it's a real uh, a uh, full loop kind of uh, product that they've they've done for themselves. Um, it's really outstanding work that uh, that Kentucky has done, um, and we gave a uh, an award to to the uh, provider that that worked so closely with them was IDS um, Interval Data Systems, and uh, because of the, the very close relationship and the the work that was done, um, we we thought that they uh, needed some some recognition as well. 
Uh, next up is Carleton College, which we saw earlier uh, when we started. Uh, so this, this campus, like I say, is in, in Minnesota. They have and have been a very, uh, while they're small, they have a real uh, commitment to sustainability. Um, they have a whole broad mix of data sources that are coming in besides electricity of their interval um, meters, natural gas, fuel oil, domestic water, wind turbine, and solar PV, oh sorry, steam production and condensate return. So this is, they are on top of um, all of their, their energy uh, uh, uses. They have 135 meters and 120 ut uh, uh, utility accounts. So the, the need to stay on top of this was something that really uh, drove the, the use of their EIS. The thing that they've done, and they, were, they also received a new uh, uh, installation award last year, was that they have a process that is very well defined for how they deal with their data. So this is their MPCX program. They look at their, um, their EIS daily to see if there are any offline or flatlined meters. If there are, they, they work on that immediately. They also have a weekly review that um, these are ranking the buildings by a couple of different metrics, uh, kilowatt hours per square foot, kilowatt hours per occupant. And they review all the trend analyses. So, um, and, and then annually, they, they do a, another large review um, to help them plan for the, the uh, work that they'll do, the RCX that they'll do in the upcoming year. The other thing that they do, also similar uh, in some ways to the Aurora project, is that they really have students involved in the, uh, in the work that the energy team is doing. So on the energy team, they have the maintenance manager, the energy manager, and about um, three students. So the, these students are getting some real world energy manager experience and seeing how their school works. Um, next up is UC Davis. They are uh, a public university in Davis, California. And uh, they have done a lot of uh, very innovative things um, that perhaps a, a, a public university um, like Davis can do. They, um, they were awarded an innovation award uh, for the use of the, their analytics. What they did um, is uh, just for two buildings, they, they um, uh, looked at uh, FDD, or they used FDD in, in, in two particular buildings um, where you see the energy savings of 22% and then the other building 24%. Um, and uh, in doing that, they, were, um, uh, they did an existing building commissioning uh, pass. They reviewed those, uh, they reviewed their BAS and then they used FDD to preserve what savings that they were um, able to achieve. The second thing that they did, not FDD, but um, again on this occupant engagement idea, is that they created two different websites. The one on the left is the um, Thermostat, which was a, a, a web portal that uh, they asked students and faculty and staff and anybody who was uh, living and operating in any of the of the hundred buildings uh, in the on the campus to report their hot cold. Um, uh, responses, problems in general. Uh, they had over 6,000 people respond, which um, would probably make most building managers crazy, um, but uh, over the, the period of uh, 2014 to, to 2017, they got these 6,000 replies through the system. So not only does it uh, engage the, the students, staff, and the, the community of the school in the energy use of their buildings, but it, it really pointed out to the facility staff um, when the uh, complaints were coming from one particular building that that was a place they needed to, to focus on. Um, and then uh, secondarily, they did another uh, dashboard, which is called the Campus Energy Education Dashboard, the one on the right. And um, that's a, a, an EIS that's displaying water and uh, energy use in, in those uh, 100 buildings. So uh, energy awareness is something that uh, you would probably find is very uh, high among the, the students and, and staff at, at Davis even still. Uh, next one is Emory University. Um, they are uh, Atlanta, Georgia, and um, they've also been a, a real uh, leader in, in sustainability in the higher ed community. 
um, they were able to achieve um, a 25% reduction. And when we did the calculations from the energy data that they gave us, we couldn't believe it was 25%. So we kept back, we went back and back and, and did the calculations a number of times. And what well, we did find that it was indeed 25% um, that they got campus-wide as an energy reduction. What they did was they um, wrote their own um, rules, their own FDD rules into their ALS system. So it's a little bit different from what we'd seen before. Um, and um, so the, the impetus for it, too, was that um, when they started, before they, they had this FDD uh, uh, algorithms in place, they documented one building that um, had been, com uh, after its uh, commissioning, um, was seeing a, a real very uh, serious uh, degradation of their, of their energy performance. Um, in fact, it was a... Uh, they, they instituted FDD in that one building and saw a 51% drop. So they take this to the uh, university administration and say, we're, we're getting some, some really good numbers here about how we can save. So um, that, that was their um, kind of proof of concept uh, for within, their, within their school, system, uh, school buildings. Uh, the next is Salt Lake City. This is the public safety building in Salt Lake City that was designed as a um, net zero building. After a year, it was not performing as a net zero building and it was really, uh, had fallen quite off of the model predictions that uh, its, its energy use was, was much too high. So they instituted um, FDD there as well and uh, very quickly they found that there was uh, the problems of simultaneous heating and cooling. Uh, they were over-ventilating uh, their occupied spaces and that the air handlers were, were uh, operating during unoccupied hours. So they, they fixed and in fact they went back to the design doc of the, of the building and saw that the original spec called for um, uh, uh, the outside air uh, uh, ventilation was, um, was actually incorrect in the, in, in the spec. So they cut the airflow in half and, and saw a good deal of savings from that. They also shifted their load to chilled beams, so um, that's a, a more efficient. And um, they uh, were able to schedule the, the unoccupied spaces much more uh, tightly and accurately, so they, they didn't um, uh, condition during off hours. Um, what they say that they saw in, uh, after the FDD was instituted there was a $50,000 natural gas uh, dollar savings and they, were, uh, they shut off their boilers in the summertime and they were able to achieve uh, Energy Star rating of 100 after that. And last is uh, Sprint. The Sprint headquarters in um, Kansas City uh, worked with, uh, their, uh, with CBRE and ESI. Uh, Sprint won the Best Practice Award. They um, also have FDD. And um, they were finding, uh, again, these are now starting to come up more often, uh, stuck dampers on air handlers. Um, their outdoor air uh, sensors were uh, drifting and um, uh, also stuck dampers on VIV boxes. So uh, they were able to, to bring their um, their building, their headquarters building back up into tune. So I'm gonna move on. Uh, pretty quickly because I only have a few minutes left, but there's still so much to tell you. So um, back on the smart energy analytics campaign, um, these uh, examples I gave you are just uh, eight of the uh, 66. There's, um, uh, in, in the data that we had for the report, we had uh, just uh, 47, but we're now at 66. So from our first year's reporting, um, and this is again the data that we received from those, 40, those original 48 participants. Um, and um, in that, even though we had 48 participants, we had 15 full data sets from, from, uh, from 15 participants. Um, it, but from those we, were, we saw and were able to calculate um, 400 million BTUs uh, uh, in the, a year and a, a $9 million savings. Um, a mix, uh, the, this too is, um, 
in the synthesis report that's, that's on the website. So you can take a look um, at this and a whole lot other um, of the metrics that we captured. But uh, EIS is, is typically uh, what our participants are using uh, in the highest percentage. And when we asked them what, they're, what they were looking for, what was their motivation for, for um, uh, using an EMIS system, energy savings always came out on top. Uh, similarly, we, uh, with this group of uh, deep data on, on 15, or 15 um, uh, participants that we got, we were able to um, do some, some first-year calculations on energy savings in dollars and um, uh, uh, the, the median you see of uh, between them is, um, I believe it is energy savings on the left side median is 5% uh, energy savings from that 15. And on the right side, the cost savings is uh, a 20 cent per, per square foot. And last um, of the uh, data in that report is just how the savings are going over time. So uh, first year savings are, are important, but uh, second, third, fourth, and of course fifth year um, is, is really what we, we want to see how the trends go. So with this original set of data, um, we saw a 5% um, savings in, the, in those that had just one year of post uh, implementation of their EMIS. Uh, going to 14% for those uh, smaller group, of course, that had uh, two years of post-implementation. And then uh, we have only uh, three uh, examples who have three years of data, but they're showing 22%. Um, so it's a good trend, and this will be certainly updated with our 2018 data and costs. I think I'm going to go beyond this. Um, so the Smart Energy Analytics campaign, smart-energy-analytics.org, is where you would find all of this. Um, just to wrap up, there is one other project. It doesn't have anything to do with the Smart Energy Analytics campaign or EMIS, um, and that's the commissioning study. So um, I don't know if, if any of you are familiar with the uh, 2000, for the, the first commissioning study <clears throat> that was published by um, Lawrence Berkeley National Lab and written by Dr. Evan Mills uh, really looked at the, um, the, the landscape of commissioning in 2004 and then he updated in 2009. And uh, in doing that, he collected data from a number of different sources and, and looked at a number of different uh, metrics uh, on, in commissioning projects. So. Um, uh, we are um, looking at it again, and we're gathering new data. So it's, it's certainly high time to get uh, this, this study refreshed because a lot's changed since 2009, um, and we're going to compare the data, see, see how things have, um, uh, have changed in, the, in these last years. Uh, particularly is EMIS, um, are these ongoing commissioning and, and monitoring-based commissioning uh, processes being um, seen in commissioning projects, uh, what the costs are now, and um, uh, if there are any new building types that are going to bring us new data in, um, uh, such as uh, data centers that we might not have looked at in, in, others, uh, in the previous study. Um, so uh, we, we do this, and uh, again, it's, it's a resource for, for everyone to use, and, and this particular uh, study really has been something that's been a foundational document. Um, utilities are using it or have used it quite frequently when they're looking at designing um, uh, different RCX and MBCX incentive programs. Um, uh, just again, very briefly, um, we're, we are going to be looking at uh, uh, all of the same metrics that were captured in the, in the 2009 study and, and adding a few more um, uh, pieces of information, uh, such as uh, certifications, um, and if, uh, if that has changed at all, um, and um, what, if there are, what measures are being uh, most typically uh, done as a result of in, in those commissioning studies. So we have uh, just finished our data collection um, uh, effort uh, and working with the Building Commissioning Association and with a number of utilities around the country that, that we know. Uh, we're, we're getting a, a good set of data, so we'll be probably doubling the amount of um, 
of uh, commissioning projects that are, are being analyzed in it, that all the results of this will be released and published in the fall of this year. And um, my last slide here is just, these are a couple of resources uh, that you might want to take a look at. And um, uh, again, many of these on the Smart Energy Analytics uh, website. And with that, thanks very much. Appreciate your time.